All right, so I saw a comment here about uh, this one here. Good job. I just started getting into Blender. I'd love to see him making a video for this. Obviously, I'm not the OP or the creator of this. That's uh, Zornry. I don't even know how you say that. Anyways, uh, but I thought I would give it give it a go and make it a quick little tutorial on how to make this sort of thing. So it won't be exactly the same, but it'll be similar anyways. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and hop over into Blender. Uh, and the first thing I do is I'm going to delete my light because I'm not going to need it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my cube into a plane. You could just delete the cube and create a plane from scratch, but the cube is already there. So I'm going to scale it up times 8 so that it fills the grid just because that's the look I like. And I'm going to go ahead and name this ground because keeping everything named properly is important. And with Blender, you got to go and name not just the object, but the app object mesh data as well, which is a bit of a pain, but oh well. So then I'm going to go to the modifier stack and I'm going to add a subdivision surface, change it to simple and set its subdivisions for the view and for the render both to five. So that'll give me lots of geometry to work with. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a triangulate underneath that. And that'll just, as you can see, triangulate that geometry. So what I'm going to do next is add a displace. Go ahead and add new new texture and just call that waves. Now I think uh, the guy who originally made this in a comment said that he used the ocean modifier, which works just as well. I'm just not familiar enough with it to uh, play around with it. So what I just did there is I quickly added an empty. That's just shift A, empty, plane axis. And then I'm going to reselect my... Uh, Reselect my plane here, my ground plane, and then on the displace modifier, I'm going to change it from local to object, and then just choose that empty. And we're going to use that to animate the motion of the ocean. Uh, so then I'm going to come up here to the texture panel, uh, and I have my waves one automatically select it. I'm going to change it to clouds, just change the size to one, and that's about it. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to make this a 48 second animation. So I'll set my end time to 48. Um, and then I'm going to grab the uh, the empty. And as you can see, when I move it, it uh, changes the displacement. So I'm going to hit with my frame with my frame set to 1. And with the empty selected, I'm going to hit I and insert a location frame. Then I'm just going to come down here and type in 48. Uh, and that will jump me up to frame 48. Then I'm going to hit G, X, and hold down control so I can snap. And I'm going to snap over two. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and insert a keyframe for that location. Now I've hit Alt-A and I play through the animation. You'll see it kind of goes through it and it's, it's pretty close to being a perfect uh, loop. Now one thing you'll notice is the animation has easing in and easing out. So it kind of starts off slow and ends slow and kind of goes fast in the middle. So we can go ahead and get rid of that. Just reset myself to frame one by hopping over to the animation over here. And just down here, if I select everything, so toggle A until you see the handles, and then just hit V and select vector, that'll make it so it has no easing on the animation and it will play at the same rate the entire time. So now if I play through this, you can see it's pretty close. It's not a perfect loop. I could probably probably get it to be one, but I honestly don't care enough for this test because um, I'm not even going to render the final animation anyways. Uh, the ocean modifier I think is a lot easier to get a perfect loop with. All right, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a wireframe modifier. You'll see that deletes the original mesh that I had, but I can just uncheck replace original mesh and I'll get my mesh back. Uh, and then I'm going to turn on creased edges, thick, set the thickness to 0 0.01. Uh, and choose relative thickness. That'll kind of scale it all appropriately. Uh, and the only other thing I'm going to do is set the material offset to 1. So now I'm going to go ahead and make the material for this ground plane. So I'm going to call this ground. And I'm going to, instead of using a diffuse, I'm going to use a principled shader. Um, I'm using the Blender 2.79, so I have access to that, which doesn't exist in 2.8, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I'm going to leave all the settings exactly as they are. Uh, the only thing I'm going to change is that under settings, I'm going to change the viewport color to black, so that it'll look black. Um, 
um, because right now basically this is just going to reflect the environment um, and I'm going to make the environment black and there's no extra lighting right now so uh, let's add the color for the the material for these neon wires that we have so I just create a new material I'm going to call this blue um, I'm going to change it to an emission shader uh, leave it set to one for this and I'll just pick kind of a close to that neon blue. If I was doing this for real, I'd go look up the uh, proper kind of color I'd want to use. Uh, and I'm just going to set that as the viewport color. And you'll see that that set this so that it is blue. And that is because in the modifiers, we said material offset one. If we put it to one or to zero, it would keep the black. But because we put one, it's looking at what the default material for this is and then going up one. So you could do two, three, four, whatever, depending on how many materials you had and what you wanted to target. So that's basically it for this. I'm going to go ahead and add the sun now. So I'm going to set, I'm going to add a cube. We'll name it sun. And go ahead under modifiers, add a subdivision surface, set the view to two and the render to four, and then turn on smooth shading for it. Um, you could just use a regular sphere, but a cubed sphere looks better. Um, then I'm going to G, Y, and just move it so that it's a little further back here. Uh, and then make a material for it. So go to materials, go to my blue one, hit this two to duplicate it, and then just rename it pink. Oops, that's not right. And then go ahead, grab a pink color, and set that for the viewport just so it can look nice. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and probably scale this up too. So just by holding in control, target in two. You could type in two as well. Doesn't make much of a difference. Um, so we're almost done. The only other thing I'm going to do is set the world. I'm going to change it from a background surface to a holdout shader, which is just black. Um, you could basically disconnect it, and you could basically disconnect and have no shader and get the same results. But having it as a hold out I think it's just cleaner um, I'm gonna change my world settings I have it set to meters but for this I'm just gonna can I get it back to the default none yeah there we go um, so now I'm gonna just select my camera I want to set up my camera that's what I want and go ahead zero everything out for it oh my god such a pain all right, so now with my, going to go into camera view, can't see nothing, change the rotation to 90 degrees, change the z-axis to maybe one, set my x to, let's try negative five. Oops, I want it negative five on the y. All right, and I'm going to set this to be a square. We'll go 2048. Um, yeah, so now we can start playing with... Uh, the settings. So I'm going to change the focal length to 50 just to be, I don't know, just to fill the frame a bit better. And I'll adjust my rotation down to, mm, let's go to 80. And then I'm going to raise the sphere up one. So it kind of fills the whole frame. Uh, and with that, we're pretty much done. So I'm just going to check out what my sample settings are here. Um, I'm going to change, oh no. I'm using branch path tracing just because I find it to be a little fa faster. There we go. And I'm just going to set everything to 1 except for the diffuse. Um, render samples are at 64. Mm, performance, 256. I'm using my GPU. And we'll quickly do a render of this. Um, oh, I made a mistake already. I'm going to cancel this. Um, I want my round roughness to be 0.5. I forgot to set that because otherwise it'll be perfectly reflective. So this just makes it so that it's not perfectly reflective. Yeah, here we go. So the reason I wanted to use the principal shader is because it'll get you these nice kind of reflections from the light in it. Um, you don't need them. It's not necessary, but I like the look of it. So it's different than what the OP did, but 
that's all right. We want ours to be a little different. So now I'm going to go to in the compositor. Um, I control left arrow to get to compositor or just from up here. Uh, pop over, check use nodes, use nodes, use nodes. There we go. I can do this. Uh, control shift to link up the viewer and uh, go ahead and hide that. So now I can see my image. So what I'm going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is add a filter node. Nope, I want to add a filter glare node. And change this from streaks to fog glow. Set the size to like 12 or 9, I guess. 9 is the maximum. And if you set that on to the viewer. Uh, oh yeah, you want to set the threshold to 0. There we go. So now we kind of glow. Um, you could adjust the threshold depending on uh, depending on what you want, what kind of look you want. So now we're going to go ahead and add a distort node, lens distortion, and just down here for dispersion, you can check 0 0.05, um, set that to the viewer, and you'll see that'll give us that. Uh, I can't even remember what it's called. Oh no, I can't remember at all. It's dispersion, but Oh, chromatic aberration. That's what it's called. I knew I'd remember. Uh, so the only other thing this is really missing is the the lines. So we're going to add those. The easiest way to do this would be to have a texture that you made in like GIMP or Photoshop or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to do it inside Blender because I can. So I'm going to go over here. Uh, make sure I don't have anything. I'll select the camera just so I don't accidentally add a texture to anything. And I'm going to come over here to textures and you'll see it's in brush mode. Just add a new one, and I'm going to call it Lines. And then in the Compositor, I'm going to select Texture Mode, come over to uh, the Brush Texture. You'll see it automatically selects Lines for me. And I can hit Use Nodes. Uh, so I can go ahead and delete this checkered one, and I'm going to add a Textures Wood. And just link that up so we can see a preview of it here and here. Uh, I'm going to change the size and turbulence to 1 for each. Then I'm going to add a converter, distort, yeah, distort, uh, rotate, uh, and I'm going to, you'll see it's got the x-axis and the y-axis set to 0, and the z-axis is set to 1, so I'm going to change the turns to 0.125, uh, and that'll basically make it vertical. It's not perfectly vertical, but it's pretty close, and it's a lot easier to get it vertical than horizontal. So now back in the compositor, I can go ahead and add a texture. I can select the lines texture and you'll see that that uh, if you go to the color option it puts the lines there. So we can now go ahead and do, 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 do. I want to add a distort and a rotate uh, and just change that to 90 degrees and then I can get this pretty close to horizontal. 89. Well, 91 maybe. Oh no. I'm just going to leave it at 90. It's fine. Um, then I'm just going to change the scale to like 40. And that will give me a bunch of lines, a bunch of vertical lines. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and add a color node mix and set this as the bottom input, my lens distortion to the top, set this to the viewer. Um, right now you won't see any change because it's at a mix with a factor of 1. Um, I'm going to set it to screen, set the mix factor to 0.1, and that's still a bit much, so what we'll do is just in here, we'll add a converter, a color ramp, and select this flag, if I can get it, there you go, and change the white value to like 0.5. So it just kind of subtly overlays it. And there you go, just do a quick render, you see the full thing. But yeah, all you'd have to do now is go out and render the entire animation, and you'd have something pretty similar to uh, what was posted. Um, of course, you'd probably want to use higher samples and play with the distortion animation just a little bit more to get it to be a perfect loop. But otherwise, this is kind of a close approximation of uh, what was done. Thanks.